Welcome to Best of Reddit. Be sure to subscribe as we upload new content daily. On this episode of Best of Reddit we have a few nuclear revenge stories for you so let's get straight into the first one. Not my story, but my father's. Took place in the early 2000s. He's a master mechanic who can literally work on any car foreign or domestic. He's teaching me right now, and it's an honor to learn from him. He's always run his own independent repair shop almost as long as I can remember. And he told me this story recently that just seems perfect for this sub. So this guy comes in with a pretty nice Chrysler convertible to get his transmission fixed. He had to remove the transmission, disassemble, and rebuild it. Pretty long process but it's no problem. After a day's work, he calls the customer up, says his car is ready, and reminds him of the agreed upon price of about $1,200. The guy said he could only pay $600 then, and he'd have to get back to him on the rest. Now, this isn't out of the ordinary. Where we live, most people aren't exactly wealthy. And my dad's a nice guy. He single-handedly supported four kids and a wife, so we weren't exactly rich. It's not uncommon for people to pay in installments. He doesn't charge interest or fees or anything. Just tries to do what's right. The guy pays half his bill, and with the promise of paying the remaining amount in a few weeks, he leaves with his car. About two months pass however, and the guy hasn't paid. Hadn't even contacted my dad about any issues or to say something like he lost his job or something. So my dad calls him up and asks when he thinks he'll be able to pay the rest of his bill, and I kid you not. This is how the convo went. Dad, hey this is placeholder name I was wondering when you'll be able to pay the rest of your bill. Guy, oh. Yeah. About that, I'm not paying it. Dad, surprised, what? Is something wrong with the car? If something went wrong, I'll take care of it. Guy, no no. The car runs great. I'm just not gonna pay you. Dad, what? Why? Guy. Well I have the car now, so I don't see any reason to pay you. They went back and forth a bit before my dad realized it was pointless and decided to enact some sweet sweet revenge. He calls up a local towing company and gives them the guy's address, license plate, and car description and tells them to tow the vehicle to the county recycling center. He then calls up the recycling center and say, hey, you're gonna be getting a Chrysler convertible license plate XXXXX from name of towing. When it gets there, I want you guys to crush and recycle it. And so, they do. Car was crushed and recycled. The next day, the guy shows up to my dad's business furious and with the state patrol. My dad explains the entire story, and the cops tell the guy that technically, the vehicle was moved, not stolen, the recycling center received recyclable goods, and not stolen property, and now the car no longer exists, as it's been recycled, and thus was not a criminal manner, but a civil one. So the guy sues my dad and once again, my dad explains the entire story, and amazingly, the judge says the same thing as the troopers and dismissed. It sounds almost unbelievable, because it just seems so illegal, but if a judge rules in his favor, it's got to have some merit by a technicality or something. Granted this was maybe 15 years ago, so the laws could have changed since. But wow. The guy gets his car crushed simply because he chose not to pay the remaining repair bill and wanted to take advantage of someone's kindness. Next up we have, be a POS all of your life, have fun getting stranded in a drug cartel city. Before I start, I want to say that English is not my first language and that I might type some nonsense here, feel free to leave suggestions in the comments about redacting posts. This revenge was performed by my mom and her epic mind. It all started when I was born, life was happy, good and easy. My brother was a good and working person, college dropout, but always very smart, or that's what we thought. My brother went out every night with his friends, nothing alarming but very weird. Time passed and I turned 10 years old, at this point my brother had a girlfriend, a son, and had already moved out. It was fun, until my brother moved back with me and my parents. Crap truly hit the fan there. The first day we noticed an instant change in both his personality and appearance, you see, he didn't move back in alone, he came with his son and girlfriend. We asked why he came back and he simply said they had a problem and this was temporary. For his girlfriend to which I will refer as D and son this was true, but he stayed for the rest of this story in our house. When D and her son left she cut contacts with both our family and my brother, but occasionally asking for money. Don't tag her as bad just now because she had a very good motive. 
My brother after this became a good-for-nothing piece of crap with everybody in the house. Turns out his, friends, actually were his dealers, you know, for weed and that stuff. Later we asked why did they truly leave the other house and he just said, I had a fight with her brother and dad. It was vague but it was true. Sometime around 2018 when I turned 11 we occasionally went to visit Dee and her son, one of those times my mom asked why she cut contacts, the truth was that my brother was emotionally, physically, verbally and sexually abusing her. She didn't press charges, and still refuses to do so because of fear. My mom became enraged at him, but didn't do anything just yet. Years passed, my brother stayed in our house, fights between my brother and everybody here became more and more common, my brother smoked pot 24-7 with two kids in the freaking house. I started showing signs of depression around those times, I was 11 years old, imagine how crappy this was for me to consider suicide at that age. More time passed, it's now 2020 and his first fight with my dad, his stepdad, just happened, my mom was leaving to go to Kuliakan and right after the fight my brother asked if he can go. My sister, which was not relevant to this story, offered to buy him a plane ticket. This is where the revenge starts. You see, my sister bought a ticket to go, but not to come back, mom was the one to come up with this plan, my brother didn't know this at the time. Culiacan is a city known for being home to various drug cartels, Sinaloa, the state where Culiacan is, is pretty much horrible, more if you are like my brother. The day my mom returned is when I was notified about all of this, I was expecting my mom to come back with my brother, but she came home alone. My brother was left alone in a hotel, with no money, no family, nothing. He tried calling us multiple times through public phones but wasn't successful at all. Unless he gets a job and a house he's either going to die of starvation or is going to get killed by a drug cartel. It's the first time in years I've truly felt happy. Thanks a lot for reading all of my nonsense.